which is referring to Jesus. Now, John, I think, well, I believe personally that he did this on purpose so that both Jews and Greeks would understand who he was talking about. That he wanted them to understand that Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Word. So, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. The Father and the Son were mutually together. They had a process in creation. This whole space-time uh, material universe, both were actively involved in that. Jesus willingly gave up his heavenly status to take the form of a man, to come to earth, to die on the cross uh, for you and I, for believers in Jesus Christ. So in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Jesus is fully God. Now he became fully man, but he is fully God. He did not give up his deity to come to earth as man. This is significant to what we see in this book. Jesus Christ has always been throughout all eternity. So let's keep going. Jesus is eternal. Jesus is light. Verses 3 through 5. All things were made through him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So Jesus, as I said, was there at creation. All things were made through him. Colossians 1, 16 through 17, it says this. For by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold to great. Well, Jesus was there. He was actively involved when things were, the universe was created. He was an active participant in the Trinity, the three persons of the Trinity. They were all involved in making that happen, yet as created God, Jesus uh, also came so that we might have life. He is the giver of life. Now, he's called the light of men. Jesus is called the light of men. Now, it's kind of confusing uh, when you first read that. 1 John 1, 5 kind of helps us understand this is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. It helps us understand that the light overcomes the darkness. The light was coming, as we talked about two weeks ago, is coming into the world. He's going to overcome the darkness. Nothing overcomes the light. No amount of sin or darkness or evil can overcome the light. The light has come. The light always wins. There's a children's book Olivia gave me to read a few weeks ago, and I kept putting it off, and I finally read it, and at the end, there's a story. He, he says this, he says, every time you see the sun, the moon, or the stars, or light a candle, or turn on your nightlight, remember the story of the child, the king of light, brought into the darkness of this world. And remember that he gave us this baby Jesus as a present, as long as you remember that you will never, ever have to be afraid of the darkness again. Why? Jesus is the light. Jesus overcomes the darkness. Jesus ultimately wins. You can't overcome the light. However, and because, verses 6 through 8, Jesus is better. Verses 6 through 8. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. Now John, and it's an interesting uh, way that he wrote this, and he, it's not talking about John the author, he's talking about John the Baptist. But John the Baptist broke a 400 year silence between the Old Testament and the New Testament. So we have this 400-year gap where we don't have any 
uh, scriptures uh, being written or anything like that. Well, John the Baptist comes proclaiming, no, the Messiah is coming. Those prophecies, like we read about a few weeks ago in Isaiah, they're going to happen now. Jesus is coming, and he is better than I am. John was sent to prepare people that the Messiah was finally coming. He's going to be here. He's going to walk with us. John preached the same gospel we preach today. He wanted people to believe the light, believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, so they might spend the eternity in heaven with him. Now, he wanted all to believe, but as we find in verses 9 through 11, not all will. Sometimes Jesus is rejected. Verses 9 through 11. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. Just like the smallest light in a room, in a dark room, will light up the entire room, Jesus is entering the world as that light. However, not all will accept him. Not all will believe in Jesus, and if we've been around for any time at all, we know this to be true. Not all people believe Jesus. Not all people accept him. They reject him. But, verses 12 through 13, the promise, some will accept him. Jesus is accepted by some. Verse 12, but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Now John uses uh, this verse to kind of transition again. He's transitioning back to the hope we find in Jesus, the love he showed us. In order to receive Jesus as the Christ, we must place our entire faith in him. We must place our entire being. We must pledge our allegiance to Christ. We no longer live for whatever we lived for before, but we embrace Christ. Salvation is a complete process. Belief is a gift of God that He gives us to believe in Him. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. Many of us know these verses. It says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Salvation comes by Christ alone. Our salvation is ultimately through Christ alone. He produces salvation. It is God that saves. Titus 3.5 He saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to His own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. In Christ alone we are saved. And ultimately, that is what we celebrate at Christmas. It's not the baby that we can get distracted. It's not the manger scene that we get distracted by that as well. It's that Christ came to save His own. He came into the world to make that possible. Without Him coming, we're left with nothing. We're hopeless. We have no joy. We have no peace. We're ultimately helpless on our own. There's nothing we can do to bridge that gap between our sinful nature and God. We needed something or someone in this case to bridge that gap for us so that we might be whole. We might be complete in Christ once more. This is the gospel we proclaim. This is the gospel we believe for salvation. It's the gospel we share with others. Ultimately, look at verses 14 through 18. It's one of my favorite verses in Scripture. Jesus is God. This changes everything. Jesus is God. Verse 14, one of my favorite verses. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen His glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about Him and cried out, This was He of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, because He was before me. For from Him... For from his fullness we have all received 
Grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. The only God who's at the Father's side. He has made him known. He has made him known. Jesus Christ, the Word became flesh. Think about this. Christ took on humanity. He took on humanity. The infinite became the finite. The eternal was conformed to time. The invisible became visible. The supernatural one became natural. God took flesh. God lied in a manger. God played with other children. God ate around the table. God sweat on the roadside. God slept in the boat. God shared our human weakness. He experienced our temptations, yet did not sin. This is the wonder of the incarnation of Jesus Christ. God is clothed in human flesh. It is as if the splendor of God has been squeezed into the human body. Jesus is truly divine and truly human. The glory of God was on display as Christ took on flesh and came to this earth. That is what we celebrate at Christmas. That is what we celebrate. And His grace has been shown to all of us by doing so. I'll end with this. I read this this week, and I think it sums it up nicely. One author said this, When we hear the call of Jesus and follow Him, Jesus says to us, You will be my witnesses. Our faith is not a private matter. It's a public window through which God wants to reveal Jesus to others. That is our primary call on earth. No matter what other task God has given us to accomplish, we are not our own, but we, like John, are men and women sent from God. And we have the good news that the world needs. That is why we're here. That is our mission. We're actually going to talk about that more next Sunday. But that is why Christ came. So that we might have eternal life. Let us pray. Father, thank you today for the good news that comes in the gospel. I thank you for what we read in John. It's such a promise to us. It gives us peace of mind knowing that the God of the universe came in human form as Jesus Christ to purchase our salvation, to die on the cross for our sins, to live a sinless life, to be raised again after the third day and now sits at the right hand of the Father. And He left the Holy Spirit for us. And we don't have to be alone. We never have to be alone. That He works in our lives. And Father, I, I'm just so humble and grateful for that truth. And I pray that for Christians here this morning, that this knowledge, this passage of Scripture will be a hope passage that we have seen the love of Christ laid out on display before us. That we have seen all that He has done for us. And there in turn, we pledge our allegiance to Him. And we want to live for Jesus with our lives. And we want to please Him. And we don't want to keep this news to ourselves. But we want others to experience the same love that we have. We want them to see the beauties of Christ in the gospel and know that and live for it and live a changed life that they don't have to be uh, lost in their sins, but they might experience the life that is found in Jesus Christ. In your name I pray. Thank you.